Hello, and welcome to episode one of What If Casca Kept Her Sanity. So before I jump into the what if, I want to explain the premise behind it. So in this what if, after the events of the eclipse, Casca retains her sanity. She remembers everything that happened during and before the eclipse, and so there's no gaps in that regard. What will happen though is that she will be triggered by seeing or thinking of guts and by apostles or spirits or anything fantastical as a side effect of what she experienced during the eclipse. And this what if will be told from her perspective. So my goal in this what if is to give Casca a resonant arc after the eclipse without altering the larger plot. So I want to make the bigger events that happen the same. So there will still be the shadow of the eclipse at the Tower of Conviction and the same party will get together with Guts and Casca and they'll all head over to Elfheim just like in the original series. I will take liberties with the two years Casca spends alone because, well, it wouldn't be much of a story if I didn't. <laughs> This what if will be centered around Casca overcoming her trauma and finding her own self-worth after spending the majority of her life living for the sake of the person she saw as her savior. So with all that being said, let's get into it. We open with Casca waking up in Godo's mind. As soon as her eyes open, she notices Guts and he rushes towards her. Casca! She gets up to run to him, relieved to see that he's all right, but then she breaks down, visions of the eclipse flashing through her mind. What's wrong? What's happening to you? Please. I need to be alone. Guts runs away, a tear of blood falling down his face. We fade out on Casca panicking alone in the cave. Fade into Casca sitting in that same cave, feeling helpless. I lost my comrades, my leader, and now I can't even look at the man I love. The events of the eclipse flash through her mind again, and in a panic, she runs towards the exit, not knowing how to deal with the pain filling her. She runs outside, running through the forest, picturing lost members of the hawk. She sees herself arguing with Corcus. She sees Pippin hitting the roof of the tunnel and saving them while they were rescuing Griffith. She sees Judeo telling her to rest when she was leading the hawk. Tears of grief streaming down her face. Suddenly, spirits start to surround her and she falls to the ground, convulsing, again, reminded of the eclipse. Guts runs to her while Skull Knight watches. Casca, get a hold of yourself. Suddenly, she grasps him in unbelievable physical pain. Then, a small, barely formed demonic fetus plops into the ground as she gives birth. Guts tries to stomp it, but she stops him. No, don't, please. But it's a demon, just like the ones that killed our comrades, just like the ones that did that to you. Please, Guts, please, just don't hurt him. The sun rises and the demon infant disappears. No, come back! Fade to black. We fade into Casca, sitting in the cave, looking empty. Erica comes down, holding a bowl of soup. Hi, Casca. Guts wanted me to tell you that he had to leave. Even though I told him he should have told you himself. Thank you. Please don't be mad at him. He didn't have a choice. Casca thinks to herself, you've always fought your own battles now is no different. I just wish this time I could have come with you. Again, the eclipse flashes through her mind and in a panic, she drops her soup. She runs outside in another attempt to escape her pain. Erica yells, Casca, wait! Casca runs and runs, tears streaming down her face. The sun sets and suddenly she starts hearing voices. You cannot run from us. Wherever you go, we will find you. You belong to me. Your blood, your flesh, your bones, your ears, your eyes, and your heart. We want your heart. So long as you have that brand, you belong to us. Casca continues to run, terrified, the eclipse continuing to flash through her mind. Suddenly, she's met face to face with a ghost, and she screams. But then, the demonic child appears and circles around her. The spirits back off and disappear. Casca, feeling a sense of comfort, reaches out to him, but he flinches back, disappearing. She stands up shakily and begins walking. Thank you for protecting me, even though I should be the one protecting you. She thinks of Guts. I know you're out there, fighting your own battle, as always. Well, this time, I'll fight my own battle too, until I can face you. She puts her hands to her mouth, almost vomiting, the eclipse flashing through her mind, but she shakes her head. 
running into the distance, fade to black. The sun rises, Casca covered in dirt and bruises, breathing heavily. She's no longer in the woods, but a flatland of tall grasses. She hears the scream of a little girl and runs towards the sound. She sees a young peasant girl cowering behind an angry man who looks to be a noble. Casca sees him knock the girl to the ground, kneeling on top of her as she continues to scream for help and instinctively yells, Unhand her this instant! The man turns towards her, startled at first, then looks her up and down, face twisting into a sick grin. You're not too bad looking yourself, peasant. Maybe I should start with you instead. Casca gives a weak smile. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. The man rushes towards her, extending his right arm. She grabs it, left hand at the bottom of the elbow and right hand on top of the wrist, and flips him onto the ground. How dare you, he shouts, and quickly gets to his feet, unsheathing his sword. He raises it angrily. Before he can strike, Casca rushes in, placing her right hand at the bottom of the hilt and left hand over his grip, then knees him in the groin. He falls to the ground, Casca holding his sword. She looks down at him and spits. Pig-headed fool. She notices a knife on his belt and confiscates it. I've learned not to leave swine like you with a weapon, she thinks back to Adan. Casca looks at the girl who's still on the ground, staring at her in disbelief. Are you okay? Suddenly, Casca's adrenaline wears off and she falls to her knees. The girl runs up to her, eyes wide with admiration. Wow, that was amazing. You saved me. Casca smiles weakly, but then the noble begins to stand up, shakily, with a furious expression. The girl is terrified, eyes filling with tears. Please do something. I don't want to go back with him. Casca looks at her, and her face softens. If you have something to protect, then take this knife. She hands the girl the knife she'd confiscated from the noble. The girl holds the knife, stammering in a panic. I, I can't. You're the hero. I, I'm just a nobody. Casca looks at her with an expression of warmth, sadness, and pain. I'm just as much of a nobody as you are. The noble launches himself at them, and the girl shrieks, turning her head and closing her eyes with the knife pointed out towards him. He pushes her down, and tears stream down her cheeks. After he lays still for a few moments, she opens her eyes to find that he's dead, the knife piercing his stomach. She pushes him off and looks at him, shaking in shock. Casca places her hand on the girl's shoulder, giving a slow, solemn nod, thinking to herself, maybe I can give this girl what Griffith gave me. Her eyes widen as the eclipse flashes through her mind and she falls to the ground, curled up in the fetal position, hyperventilating. The girl breaks out of her daze and drops her knife, rushing to Casca's side. What's wrong? What's happening to you? Casca settles down. It's... it's nothing. Just a scar. Casca's breath slows and she sits up. May I ask your name? It's Catalin. May I ask yours? Casca. Catalin looks back at the knife she dropped, then at the noble's corpse. She hugs her knees and cries. Casca scoots next to her and they sit together in silence. Thank you for watching episode one. I'd like to give a huge thank you to my patrons and a special congratulations to Omar Tlatelpa for passing the Secret Hunter exam. If you would like perks such as access to a private Discord server or access to all my scripts or shoutouts in my videos, I'd be honored if you checked my Patreon out. So I hope you have a great day. Bye!